Hi, uh, this is Eddie Izzard here. This is um, commentary for the show. And uh, so this is sexy. Now, people ask me, why call it sexy? Well, and I'm trying to say, this is not me sexy. I'm not saying, oh, I'm sexy. No, no. it was just the, the idea, like, I did the show Glorious. The state of Glorious, the state of sexy. Just more fun than calling it Elbow. I have to come up with the title. Then I work out the show after the title. I'm, I'm back to front. But anyway... So uh, here we are. This is the latest. This is the first time I've actually had a costume designed. So I was trying to go sort of military action transvesti with this look, designed by Charlotte Mann. And the uh, the um, the corset top bit that's um, from Trashy Laundry in, in LA. So made by Dot, who was fantastic. So there you go. When I went to school, I never thought I could get to go to trashy laundry and get a get a corset made. But you can do that. So, so this is being shot in uh, at Eastbourne. We decided to come and shoot at Eastbourne because I, well, we had so, yeah, just various reasons. I thought let's choose somewhere to shoot. Hey, let's go to Eastbourne, which is kind of weird because half my teachers and a load of pupils from the schools I went are in the audience. And the set here is something worked out from Alex Saad, the lighting and set designer. It's got a screen in, and the sort of bat cave idea that came up initially with all this camouflage netting. So we're just trying to have something neutral, not neutral is the right word, but something non-specific to shoot up against. What the hell am I talking about here? I think I'm, I'm just talking over this because I'm talking about nothing terribly important here. This is just waffle at the beginning. Oh, this is what used to happen at the Congress Theatre because I've sat in this theatre where we shot when I was a kid and I watched kids from school who were in the sort of amateur production of the Sound of Music in this theatre. So <laughs> I couldn't get in the school plays at that time. After 15, I got to school plays. But when from naught to 15, not much. And if you're watching this, the best thing to do is try and switch on the, the subtitles for the, the, the stand-up, and then I'll talk over that, and then you can see what's going on, because you can't listen to both, it's a bit too much. And you probably think this is a bit stupid, but anyway, vocal commentary over vocal commentary seems a bit stupid. So I don't normally talk about being a transvestite. I've tried to make a point of that, but I thought I'd better, because I've... Because you can't really see it, but I've gone back into boob mode, wearing boobs, which is, if you're transvestite, you initially come out wearing boobs. I was trying to pass as a girl, and I'm explaining this in a very stupid fashion. But one of the main things, actually, about... When I first came out as a transvestite, I thought, if I can get loose and groovy about it, because I was already doing stand-up, and people think, oh, I did this whole thing and it's supposed to be drag and it's, that's what got me known. And that's not true. In America, they think that. In Britain, they know it wasn't that way. But I was doing stand-up already and then I started wearing makeup and uh, just so that I could. But um, I thought I could get loose and groovy about it. I thought if I talked about it, and hopefully I am fairly loose and groovy about my sexuality now. But then I, I feel like I'm banging on about it all the time. But sometimes you need to explain. And then some people say, I have known, known nothing about transgender. And some people say, God, I've heard everything about transgender. The tights I'm wearing, actually, there's two pairs of tights. That's a dancer's trick, apparently. You've got to put fishnets on top and then another black pair behind. I learned that from a dancer. And they're Wolford tights, which are very expensive. Austrian, make very good tights. Fantastic. So this is essentially true. Everything I'm saying is true. I was with breasts. When I first came out, I was... They were actually... I, I experimented. had balloons filled with water at one point. Then I had sponges cut out. Sponges are quite good. I always worried about balloons, that you could get them punctured, and then, you know, your balloon is leaking, and uh, you're trying to wander around and make up on I tell you must die. Oh fuck. And, and it must be passed down, isn't it? Like the ability and to make paper airplanes. It's only you know that can 
Eastbourne is interesting because I went to two schools here. I went to St. Bede School, which was went from the age of 7 to 13, and then the Eastbourne College from 13 to 18. And my, my great-grandfather moved down from a little village in Sussex to Eastbourne and was a draper's warehouseman in a department store called Bobby. So Eastbourne must have been this big place. And then his son, my grandfather, Charlie, was born here. And my dad was born here, Harold. So a lot of history with Eastbourne. Son Trevor the South. It did, and I got all the way there, and then on the way back I got bored and took a train. <laughs> that's me, because the crowds were smaller. And it, you know, no point, you know? OK, that's too weird, that joke, isn't it? <laughs> that's too nonchalant slash ambivalent. <laughs> slash penis. Slash. This is all just ad living here. No rest. I That's why I'll go back and get some breasts. So I went to the breast shop, you know, which is uh, your local high street. A pair of your finest breasts, sir. And then it was just like that scene in Harry Potter where John Hurt's behind, ah, well, why not a pair of these for you? <laughs> ah, yep. <yeah. laughs> No, ad libbing is great, and I try and make the whole show like ad lib. People say you ad lib the whole show, and I don't ad lib the whole show. It is, and I'm not trying to make it look that way. It's just loose and conversational, so I know roughly where I'm going, but I can just go off on any tangent, just like in a conversation. If my analogy is, if you had a conversation, if you were into fly fishing or something, and you talked to ten different people about fly fishing, you'd probably say ten different conversations, but with roughly the same things in it, occasionally different or going off on tangents and. That's what a show is for me. So Bexhill's down the road, and that's where my grandmother's family came from, and Eastbourne, my grandfather's family came from. And I, and I sort of lived in, in Bexhill and was a, a boarder. I, uh, I stayed overnight called boarders. Yeah, you sleep at the school from the age of seven to the age of 18. So you become very independent, but you become a bit emotionally retarded. Stop, I'll use the fork. Because that's on the plate. If you've been on a plane, I've no knives anymore. Just that plasticky knife. It seems a bit sharp, actually, to him. But the fork, of course, a metal lethal weapon that could no one could do any harm with that. If they stuck a fork in your juggler, you'd just be ca ah, I'm fine, thank you very much. <laughs> no, no real pain. <laughs> Now, I really like this bit of material, but no one hugely reacted to it here. But I've just come from, to put this in context, this is like two, three days ago, I was in Philadelphia, just finishing off the American leg of the tour. I've been touring for four months at this point. So I've just been talking to a whole bunch of Americans, but I tried to keep all the material universal so that I didn't have to change anything when I came back. Only one packet of nibblies, they're very small nibblies. Just 40 minutes in the air with a small packet. I can eat a hundred of these fuckers. Give me more. I'm afraid to come on the plane. I want more nibblies than this. I've got an allergy to them. I still want to eat them. Because remember nuts? We were eating nuts like crazy, and then they went, no nuts, because people exploded or something. <laughs> Breasts, but you've heard of breast implants. These are not implants. If you think, oh, these are implants. No, they're not implants. They're nice squidgy, but they're not. They're imms, but they're not planted. <laughs> they're just imms. Your regular common or house garden imms. And, uh, but they do, you've heard on the aeroplane, that implant explode, and that is, to, it happened to me, uh, over 30,000 feet. It's like, just like, yeah, I know you mean. I have a child. <laughs> Sorry about this. Yes, my left breast has exploded. Have you got a pillow? Oh, and some more than nibbly, nibbly. <laughs> but then you've got one L cup boob and a D cup boob. And they get a lot of looks. I already get a lot of looks. It's a 
So by the end of it, I've got the fork. And also, I'm, I'm recording this voiceover in eSport, and I've just done the show twice. We were recording it three times, so this is the second... I'm doing this voiceover to the second night, and the third night will be the same. Um, but this is right in the, the middle of the recording. I'm about 100 yards from the seafront. <laughs> not that you can notice, not that it matters. Oh, yeah, this is why I never used to drink wine. I had really sweet tooth. And we had Lieb Milch. That was the big wine that I thought I was really cultured by drinking that. And then later on I worked out that apparently I wasn't. I'm not sure how to grab breasts when you're wearing a sort of corset top. That corset top is like... It's like a Roman breastplate, really. It's not really squidgy booby. My idea, radical as it may be, is to say if it's the 1200s, it's the 12th century. Why would they know? There's no more people who set up the history. Yes, everyone, oh, I want to do history. I want you to tell me what, who was Sally. Yes. This is kind of obviously stupid material associating with superheroes, but I kind of, um, it does actually work for my brain to, um, to think upwardly, you know, because <laughs> you have to be an insane optimist to, to be a transvestite in this day and age. Well, just to be out and not give a damn. But I found if you are insanely optimistic, it does sort of work. I, you, know, you can sort of roll things through. And in the audience, I have found out, because this is a previous night, there's loads of my teachers in there from both schools. Who I'm sure, yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure it's their taste in humour. I think they've decided, you know, someone better come along and see it. Yeah, not being a royalist, not into royalty, but in the old days, I mean, they make a good film, don't they? Not nowadays, but in the old days. That sort of, cut your head off and I'll steal your crown. Good old Shakespearean history plays. I kind of like these conversations between characters because I don't, I just sort of let go and, and let them talk to each other, which is a bit weird, a bit like playing chess against yourself. Usually doesn't get anything funny. Some, you see, it's the self indulgence, the edge of self indulgence and creativity. I feel there's a complete knife edge there, and people can look at it and go, oh, that's really self indulgent. And then you get something funny out of it. You just have to go there, you just have to commit to it. And you'll notice committing is, is huge in all drama. If you're an actor or musician or whatever, or painter or anything, it's, it's, it's the bold commitment. You see, some painters, they do stuff, and people say, well, that's nothing. But they commit so fully to it that it becomes their style, their signature. You know, think of Warhol. He's doing screen painting of cans of beans. You think, you know, what is that? But he committed so fully to it that uh, it, it, it happens. I mean, because what I'm saying, a lot of people say about my material, it's not, material's nothing interesting, but it's the way I do it. And to an extent, I, I was thinking, I wonder how you do get fantastic material. I don't know, I always, talk, I always talk about sort of pop culture, rubbish, everyday stuff, mixed with history, religion, sort of extremes. Walking in heels. I can walk in heels, but when I do stand-up, I walk in a very weird way. But you need a short skirt. <laughs> I think at the beginning I said it's the school uniform. Which I think... The school uniform is slightly different to that. But that jacket, that's what I wanted. Military, it's military frock coat. It was boy... Because we had to start. Because the look that I was looking for, talking to the designers, just doesn't really exist. Because it comes from Marlon Brando, 
on a motorbike because I did this photo on a motorbike for the tour and then there was then you go to Lara Croft Emma Peel girly version of that and then I'm just doing that back boy version of the girl version of the boy version action transvestite male lesbian sort of movable you know not very prissy I'm trying not to be prissy with this look chicken undertakers yeah that came out quite late all these bits of material, some of them, you know, are, I've done for two months, some three months, some some bits are week old. They keep adding on extra bits. And then you have to edit stuff out. It's too weak. I just like the idea of King Many Layers. I think I've used it before. I think I'm repeating. I've talked about Achilles before, but I do like Greek history and Roman history. Oh, they did a lot in those days. They got about a bit. The whole idea in the background is everything you can see the behind me. Everything slowly moving, slowly changing. The colours, the lights, the, everything slowly changes. Because in rock and roll, you can do fast, and it needs to be visually exciting. But stand out, you need the focus. It's like, it is a cross between theatre and rock and roll. The presentation is more rock and roll and the staging is more theatre. So, um, but I wanted things to just move and they will move, but hopefully you don't notice it. If it's too obvious then, <laughs> no one's going to be listening. So, yes, then the, on the Trojan side, of course, well, you've got, you've got Helen, who says, you know, I, well, pa Paris seems like a personal shopper to me. You know, the name, like, yeah, I've just been... And, uh, and uh, that can explain more. But it is weird, because I'm suddenly here with, I don't know, teachers get under your skin, or headmasters. They're in the audience, and you feel like, I better not say bum or swear my head off here. I need to sort of override that, because... This gig's going out, well, the DVD's going out everywhere, so. Which is quite weird, being an Eastbourne. So if my great-grandfather knew his great-grandson was going to be in a skirt doing a gig that would be watched by people in Los Angeles, I wonder what he'd think. Oh, that looks nice. Now, Sparta, fact seekers, well, this is a bit boring, but The Cat's Meow, which I love as a film, which you might not have seen in England yet, but it's great. <laughs> I'll eventually get it here, but um, where I played Charlie Chaplin. That was shot on the coast of Sparta, which is now you know, part of Greece. The, all the um, California scenes on the boat, the exteriors on the boat, are all in, um, in Kiparisi, which is on the east coast near Sparta which is bizarre and all the interiors were shot in Berlin so there you go I think I'm screwing up this material here the whole Odyssey Odysseus thing I'm quite tired here, as you see. I, I'm actually really tired. I haven't read this bit, and he did Hamilton. And then there's a guy with one eye, uh, called One-Eyed Guy, and uh, Blue Otters or something. And, uh, and, and the, the island, the island of the naked with the sirens, who were beautiful women who would sing to attract sailors. Come over here in your ships. We are naked, draggable women. We're not sure what the song was, but it could have been something. Come over here, won't you come? And 
the sailors would come over and they'd crash on the rocks and drown and die. And the women would go, ha, 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 ha. Which is a very girly trick. Because I've heard about it in school. When I grew up as a boy, against my will, but, you know, as a boy, it was very much a violent sort of, ah. Uh, I wouldn't actually have a huge amount of fights. I'd argue. I'd go, no, no, I'm not, no. The United Nations say I'm a special case. And do stuff like that and stop getting beaten up that way. But girls would do the mind control thing of, it's me. Not a huge direction for the audience there, but um, I believe that is true. The, what, the way girls control the situation is almost seems more dangerous than the violent way that boys control situations at school. It is rather weird. I wonder what the hell the link is between the sirens, which still could be a word. It's, it's more used for, for that noise, isn't it, now, than... For sirens, beautiful women. Wonder why. So that shot there, you can see these people sitting up the back there. And I sat up there and watched The Sound of Music. What was that, 19... It's about 73. Or 72. And then they had, they had opera glasses which you could put sixpence in, six old pence. And we all had metal combs. It was like compulsory to have a metal comb. So we all jammed our metal combs into these slots and we got these glasses out, which is kind of pointless. You see things a bit clearer then and then, then you hit people over the head with them. But then when we got back to the school, the head teacher said, right, you've um, been nicking all the opera glasses, so whoever did that, volunteer for a caning. So a whole bunch of us sort of step forward, like some sort of Roman thing. Some sort of beginning of that, huh? Too many endings, OK. <laughs> so that was fun, though. And, 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 and then there was Perseus. Perseus was a Greek hero, son of Zeus. Perseus, you see. Perseus through Perseus. Perseus. I've had history teachers come up and say, oh, this is a good way of teaching history, which he didn't swear so much. So I told them to watch it with the French subtitles on and turn the sound down. And then you could learn French and the swear words. I don't know quite how to get around it. It looks like they were rich by someone with an enormous bag of weed. And then the green monkeys who lived in a sponge cave. I was reading that the Greek myths... Unfortunately, they don't give anyone an idea of what it was like to live in Greek times because they're so bonkers. Perseus, he goes to a wedding. A king who's getting married says, uh, where's my wedding present? Oh, I forgot. Uh, what about <laughs> tissue? No, that's not going to work. What I want is the head of Medusa, who's a gorgon from the cheese family. This is an early bit of material. No, earlier. How long has this been going? Um, I think I was doing this in Australia. It started in Britain. In July, then we went to Australia, then Chatted New Zealand, really. then also Canada and America. So, how did this start? Well, I've got all these DVDs, so I've been watching DVDs on the Greeks because the Greeks ended up sort of blowing up and everything went wrong, and then the Romans took over. I find it rather depressing towards the end because they invented democracy and then it all went a bit pear shaped. And the word aristocracy comes from the hereditary rulers in Greece. There you go. They weren't the democratic ones. The democracy came in after the aristo aristocracy. But this is true. This bit is true. Three grey women, one eye, which links to the three witches kind of thing. Who oh, I think had about one eye, if you watch. Roman Polanski's Macbeth. We've got Neon going up there no, I, I'm immortal. in the uh, auditorium, which I really like.
Now, all the ideas they come from a, a kernel of I can't wear that. I seem to remember Medusa was the starting point of this, getting a hair done. I had a longer extemporization, which whenever I get the audios, because we record audio every gig, so I've got the whole genesis of this. It's a big word, isn't it? <laughs> the whole beginning bit, the way it was done. Because I keep remixing it every night, that's the basic thing. It's jazz, man. Trying to get this mime right. I'm trying to get that that voice deeper for the not on your life for Charlene, <laughs> someone in Neighbours. But it's different. I used to try and do the hairdresser doing imaginary hair, you know, snakes for Medusa, and then I'd swap down to Medusa, but I couldn't get the positioning right because Patrick Marber of the playwright frame, who used to be a stand-up comedian, he told me the more precise you get the mime, the better it kicks, and it's true. Very good point. He was a stand-up. We were in the same stand-up workshop back in, uh, ooh, how was that? Late 80s. Jackson's Lane workshop, Highgate. This is quite nice. I found it, make, it makes swishing noises with the, with the microphone. And I've gone back to to using a microphone because I had a headset before because I wanted to get two hands and so I did a gig a number of years before and that was a, just purely acoustic and, and so I had two hands back I thought, this is great with two hands so I got totally into the two hands thing I had battery packs down my bum headsets on as the venues got bigger you couldn't pick it up with a little headset you have to have a big sort of finger coming down with a big microphone in front of your face like on circle and in the end you still couldn't get good sound, but you can get much better sound with these microphones, and you can do a load of sound effects. So I thought, stuff it all and go back to the microphone. So I've kind of gone backwards. But the cordless microphones are a lot better these days. Except for transvestites don't actually help people. But apart from that, fantastic similarity. Help, help a small child, is said, help a superman. I was saying Savlon. Savlon reminds me, my mum used to put Savlon on my knee, being a nurse. Whenever I hurt my knee. It's not, it's not a laugh line. I was doing it all through America, no one knew what Savlon was. It's antiseptic cream, it's white. Yes, I don't normally get out of bed for less than a helicopter. Is there a helicopter crash? No, just just this bike. Can you mend the front wheel? No, fuck off. Oh. Why do you wear your pants on the outside? Say it's on shopping. Washing. I couldn't work out. We got such a big reaction there. That second answer got. That got a huge reaction because of uh, unrepeatable a piece of material in there, but. You leave your pants, blue pants, in the wash or something. I keep forgetting whatever I've talked about. People come up to me and they say lines of my stuff to me. And I, 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 I just stare at them. I don't know what they're talking about. I vaguely remember saying it, but or sometimes I do remember, but I'm just not in that mode. Say it and then kill it. Captain Transvestor, I think, is... I, I think that's where the superhero idea came from because I've been talking about Captain Transvestite for some time. This is true, 20 minutes. I once timed myself going from boy mode to girl mode. 20 minutes. I can do it in about 15 now. But it's just like boy with a bit of eyeliner. But then you overheat as well. If you think I've got to get ready quickly, it doesn't really work. Sweating seems pointless. Overheating, perspiring, it's just not a good thing. I've got a lip liner. What the fuck's that gonna do? I'd draw a line around it for the police! Uh, uh, fingers, fingers, fingers. It's got too many fingers! That's not a human job. Martian child, Martian child, lying here. Martian child comes from Mars, not from here. Martian child, good at cooking. 
They weren't. The Martians would make excellent cooking program people. Wouldn't you tune in? Now, Martian, first Martian fan does cooking program. You tune in. I think I take that as a huge silent yes. I should be a politician. I hear your I just sing these stupid crap songs. And the trouble is, if it's actually a song, it, 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 there's, there's rights to it. But that song is not a song. I, I, I'm pretty damn sure. I try and, because I start singing things, you will tr And if you make up songs on stage, if you're ad-libbing, it will tend to become a song or something you, maybe you know. So I actually have to purposely keep twisting it so it doesn't sound like anything. Mars, we, we will colonize Mars, I assume. God, it will just be like, be like loads of sci-fi films. The moon and Mars, we'll probably end up living there. You could be watching this right now in the future, on Mars. There you are. It won't be DVD by then, will it? It'll just be beamed onto our heads. I think it was Star Wars when they first started ah, having that kind of very deep noise. Actually, I remember in Alien, Ridley Scott's Alien, the first one, there was almost no noise, and it was just the music. The music was really kind of quiet, very scary. It was a thriller, the first one. It was like a horror film. How long does it take for Mars to go around? Oh, about... Dot, dot, dot. Don't know. <laughs> How long? It Lots would be nice if we had... Martian say day. the moon was closer, or Mars, to look up in the sky and have sunshine and a bit of planet rolling around. Probably that's only going to happen when it's on its way to crash it into us or something. Whatever I said, a week. Edit that together, you see. I've asked a few questions here to the audience. It's but they're a bit it, quiet I mean, and coming exactly. forward you, and saying what they... Uh, Mars coming to, I think, I mean, it went from one pin so it's a week. To three pin it takes a week for Mars to go around. I was in Los Angeles at the time, driving around in my Lamborghini, in my mind. I was, I was going around a pogo stick in Los Angeles, and um, in my mind. I was actually in Eastbourne in a Lamborghini. No, I wasn't. I was on Mars looking at Earth. I was in Los Angeles when this happened. But it went from a little pinprick to three no, pinpricks. I was in there. Oh, Mini oh, Cooper. Oh, no, there it is. Much cooler. Oh, Actually, Lamborghinis must be nice. But it's exciting in a sort of tedious type way. And I did look up and I saw Mars, and it was bigger. And I, and I saw another one, but I, I worked out which one was Mars. I am fascinated by the space thing. Russia, America, who's going to be first? And then Russia went, They just didn't go anywhere. The Russians God didn't. The there must have been an executive decision. I've never heard the story. Never want to go there before. I don't know what they did. Maybe they thought... Maybe it was pointless. There, but with a Russian accent. There's <laughs> only rocks there on the marsh. You know. There's... I borrowed this, this accent. This accent, this is just... Friend. Never done this before. On the great rocks there on the moon, you know. You think so? I think so. I think it is and you see, this is essentially there. just rubbish, but because I'm totally committed to it, it works. And so commitment is the key. And if you ever half commit, it just doesn't work. And that's great. Actually, you can just see that people really committed, even if they're doing it very oddly. Well, there's not much up there. It's red rocks. On the moon, there's grey rocks. On Mars, there's red rocks. And that's it. And it's a bit boring. It's like, it's like archaeology, you know? Arche archaeology, I mean, that's a slow thing, isn't it? Arche it can't be speeded up. Archaeology's got three bloody vowels. Funny just realises, so I only... only about three days old. What the hell's going on there? But that is great. Three vowels. 
because that's where you get your accents. If you know, if you look at accents, they're all changes in vowels. It's all a, a, o, e, o, a, i, o, a. It's not the consonants. They always. This is apparently true. I think this is logical. Archaeology consonants don't change in pronunciation. It's just the vowels that Let's make the country, different accents. Some of these counties don't exist, of course. With oh, you're doing a bit of alka But the time team, we have the time team in Britain. Speed archaeology. Archaeologists on the drug speed. Time That's team. Fantastic. I watch those endlessly. I think I've watched every... There must stuff. be one or two that I haven't seen. Actually, there's so many. Uh, well, give us a toothbrush in and years. bizarrely, I didn't know Time Team existed when I did this weird thing on Channel 4, British television, where I did speed archaeology, where I said, here's how normal archaeologists work, and this is with a ditch digger and dynamite. But the time to team already existed. I'm just, I'm just impatient. But it's good because I've been looking into my own family history because the Izard name is real and it's, and it seems to be Huguenot and we seem to be from the Pyrenees in France and all the Huguenots were kicked out after the repeal of the Edict of Nantes about 1670 or so that's why, and, and I'm, I'm German at my mother's side. So I find all that fascinating, all just history lying about the place. I've got my gad, dad into it now, which is why on that DVD extra it's so fascinating. And we go into the, um, the house where my great-grandfather lived and the house where he lives, which I'd never been to in Eastbourne back in the 30s. And my great-grandfather moved the other one in, in 1900. So it's just th those facts just lie around there. I think kiosk is a Viking word. A Danish one. And they gave me rollers like this. And I remember these big sort of Cindy Crawford type rollers. These were these tiny things, old lady rollers. They came out looking like a bizarre footballer. That was not a good day. But I so thought it was right. I went back again and said, "Give me another one." Sometimes when you add living, just rubbish comes out. And he said, "No, there exists no rollers bigger than that." True, but kind of boring story. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, what if I was talking about? It's the archaeology thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I dug this ditch. I dug a ditch and I went, there was nothing in it. And that was true, that was archaeology. And then I thought, actually, I wanted, to f I, I wanted to find a hoard of Roman coins or a sword or a Viking helmet. And I realized I'm not into archaeology, I'm into piracy. <laughs> That's what I wanted to find. Because piracy. Um, which is what the Vikings were. They were. That's what Viking means. And they were brilliant. They brought us a lot of... Because they took over the whole of Eastern uh, England, essentially. And, and some, you know, up in Scotland as well. And so, a lot of their language, words like kiosk, that's a Viking word. And it came from when they raped a bit. They rape and pillage and, and awful and blood everywhere and limbs hacked and money stolen. And then they'd say, if you have enjoyed today's experience, you can get some souvenirs in the kiosk, <laughs> which is just down on the beach. Thank you. So, uh, so, I was talking before about people who have to change before they help. There's, there's a third group, firefighters. They change clothes before when they I was help. starting this, and I was talking about firemen, but of course it's firemen and women. I think we, I assume there's firewomen in Britain. We've all got positive and groovy in that way. On the front of the van, you see Eric. I was doing this material in America and I just got the impression maybe they don't have mirror letters on the front of their fire engines and stuff. I assume they did or I forced them to laugh in the end. That's all in the decay. My God, got a round of applause. Politics involved. Sometimes they're beating up the wrong person. There's stuff like this. Firefighters, no politics. You just got speed. They go, which god? Uh, Buddhist god. I think this is true. Do we pull god. over quicker? Technical. Ambulances, and firefighters, Anyone probably quicker. Oh, maybe just pull over for everyone. Oh, it's an interesting thing that they proved. That when the the, the sirens go off, you can't work out where 
the fire engine, the police car, whatever, is coming from. And it's true, actually. Once I saw it, seen it mentioned on a documentary, when you next hear a siren, you won't be able to tell where it's coming from. You have to look forwards and backwards and out the side. You can't tell. I don't know why it is. They proved it or something, but uh, I can't remember why. Uh-huh. It's where Annie Hall meets Hitler's last days in the bunkers. la di da Well, no more tennis for me. It's a very funny joke. So, yes, and the firefighters, they have a slidey pole. All firefighters do have this in England, China, Venezuela. Now they do stuff. have slidey poles. I, I wonder, every the fire station ball. in the they world? Uh, what, I don't know what the slidey pole... They're just called the pole, aren't they? On the ground floor. Right next to the I've driven a fire engine. In Lust for Glorious, I drove a fire engine out of the building and then backed it up. It was great. This would be the response time. Point two of a nanosecond. On the first floor, it's just inefficient. Twenty guys, fire, fire. Down the slide, form a queue, form a queue. Go, 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 jump. Push him. He's got his legs stuck now. Just pull it. Use your axe, cut it. I'm going down the lift, I'm going, never go in a lift in a fire, you're right. It's not here, oh. it's not efficient, is it? Now, it obviously harkens back from years ago, in the 19th century, <laughs> oh, that they, you know, when, when the, the, they didn't have motorized now, uh, fire vehicles, they had... The I have checked with two different... Firefighters about this. One guy I met in New Zealand, and a guy called Tim, who was a, a firefighter from the Bronx. And he told me that the the poles were put in to stop horses getting upstairs. They used to come up la up upstairs, which is weird because I I just made it up as stupid stupid bit of material, and then found out to be true, which is very odd. Let us up, let us up, or I'll blow the hair off my chinny chin chin. Surely that's copyright, I don't know. I think everyone, well, um, yeah, everyone so that, wanted so to be a farmer that, when they were a kid, that stupid, but that's which isn't true. true. I think I wanted, there was a point where I wanted to be a farmer. I, I made it up not for long. And I asked a firefighter, and he said, that's how they got up. I have not been down a slidey ball, though. I've driven a fire engine, but not been down a slidey Have I been down? No, I don't think so. Good job. So they should just come up front and say, "There's no reason for a slidey pole, but we want one." And we go, "Yeah, have one. Have more. Have several. Have a big snakes and ladders house." So the bell goes, "Ding, ding, ding." One outside the building. One, one, one. Double turn and pike and twist and into an open top fire engine. Put on the siren. Come to me. Bring your ships upon the shore. Now, I actually sound really bad at singing. I'm actually... I think I'm probably fairly okay at singing, but I, I make it purposely bad. One, because that's comedy. And two, so I'm not singing any identifiable tune. So this is quite nice. This is... This is the Doppler effect, which I must have studied in physics at A-level, or O-level. Exams I do when I'm 16 or 18. When I was 16 or 18, and um, so this is where, where my education that I have got, I can bring back in, which pleases, I don't know who that pleases, but... Then I link this through to um, Professor Pavlov, who's sitting in the other seat. Yeah, yeah, for my parents, yeah. Good idea, not for the shagging, which is just fucked. But it's worked well for you, Professor Pavlov. <laughs> yeah, mainly dogs, though. They tend to get you on this rather embarrassing, really. 
I wish I'd never rung those fucking bells. I didn't it's establish that, so I don't know what I'm doing here. Damn the dog food shop. It's driving me nuts. <sighs> But the whole thing, the, the, the thing I was talking about, the superhero thing, the reason is fear. I'm good, I'm, I've, I've tried to push fear back as a, you know, transverse, push fear back. Sure enough, because I had fights, you know, people give me shit in the streets. They go, hey, what's the fucking thing, and all this. And I've learned martial arts since I had a big fight about five years ago. I'm now a black belt in sashimi, um, which if you know sushi, it's like that, but it's sashimi. It's just raw fish. So I like being a black belt in sashimi. But doing this material in Eastbourne, on the south coast of England, I don't think everyone. I don't, I don't think there are sushi bars in Eastbourne. So this was a bit. This is fish. And when they're in the a bit um. You go wasabi. Difficult for them to get to, get the grips with. Because I didn't know what sashimi was called sashimi, which if you don't know what it is, it's the sushi. You probably had a sushi, and that's the raw fish with the rice, which I thought was you know I, I never wanted to eat that until I actually ate it. I thought oh it's quite nice, but now I don't do rice. So sashimi is no rice, just the meat, just the just the fish. So stupid. But I've out With out wasabi, the hot stuff. Now go over there and say that. You should have been over there. Now come over here and say that. You be good when we don't. Now go over there and say that. Now go to Venezuela and say that. Well, whether in Venezuela you can escape. But it is, it's, it's, it's this fear thing, show no fear. And, uh, and that's what it's like, it's like animals, like sharks. Sharks, they can s smell. This like is interesting, the fear them. thing, because um, I think a lot of my life has been sharks, about pushing so back fear, back getting rid of fear. And you, you know, sharks well, if you're going to be a bloke and wear a skirt, you've got to be able to deal with fear. I mean, you know, those I'm doing the gigs in French and... Just if you're she not scared and not reckless, but just. And they won't take offence because they can't see you. It's the nose. The nose is sonar. It's complete, like like a bong in the bong. They send up pings, ping. It's probably not ping. I only just thought of doing this, and I what I wanted to have that particular ping noise, which actually, if you look in Monty Python, the meaning of life. I think on the DVD extra, on the, on the voiceover that, Terry Jones was saying that they couldn't get the right ping. And I can't do a ping that sounds like the sonar ping. Which is... Oh, this is true. I, got a, I was given a copy of National Geographic, which had a lot of stuff about Yemen in it, and in it on the front was stuff on sharks. And this guy, who's a real shark expert, got his finger in the... I assume it's the nostril. He's got two fingers in the nostril of a shark. And the shark is just... If it's not the nostril, it must be some sort of fold of the snouty bit. But as a tip... But I'd read that missionaries had heard that, that swimmers, uh, Samoan swimmers down in Samoa, would go and they would kiss a shark on the nose. And that would... You know, and the sharks would be happy as Larry. And it seemed really stupid, but then having read that thing, I think it's true. So if you get near a shark, actually, how you can get to kiss it, because they, they come at a very fast pace, but it's the nose. Go for the nose. But... A lot of dogs are not too bright upstairs. The bright dogs were with the Egyptians, obviously, in the early days. They're all on their walls, you know those dogs? The dogs and the Egyptians. And I think they probably were from another planet. And they went, woof, 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 pointy things, woof, 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 bye. <laughs> and off on a spaceship. They left behind the dogs going, ooh. <laughs> like greyhounds. Greyhounds are not too sharp upstairs. They get put in a cage once a week. And they go, well, there's greyhounds and there's whippets. And are whippets just slightly smaller than greyhounds? And there's kangaroos and there's wallabies. And wallabies are just kangaroos, but smaller. And then I think crocodiles and alligators, and one's bigger than the other. Just say there's one, and I don't understand why there's... Completely different names for the same thing. Now, this is based on, on greyhound. I thought greyhounds were on sticks in a sort of slot on the ground. And I saw greyhound racing in America, and they were hanging down from 
a hangy downy thing. Should be one dog, right? Let's go. Let him go, let him go. Steve, Harry, Jake, let him go. Let that fucking bunny rabbit go. Well, I'll tell you, I got a plan. I think if we stay right here and we let that bunny rabbit go, then that bunny rabbit there, he's gonna come back round. <laughs> he is, look, he's curving around, he's curving around, he's curving around. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. All right, everyone, look casual, look casual. He's got a metal front wheel. <laughs> Bunny rabbits don't have wheels. <sighs> Guide dogs, they are bright. They get chosen, especially chosen. You, you have the look in your eyes, the look of intelligence. You will become a special dog. The dog goes, food? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, don't you? Come, I will make you a leader amongst dogs. Food now? <laughs> With marrow, the yummy bit of humans? <laughs> Come. I will make you a leader who will lead people with restricted eyesight. Food at dog shop? Dog food shop? I like dog food shop. And they're trained. These dogs are trained. They're there with come 175 degrees magnetic. Church with a spire. <laughs> Meow. Dog food shop. <laughs> the trouble with guide dogs, they'll always take you to a dog food shop. You may not want to go there. But I met someone, uh, I know someone in, in, in Melbourne, she had a guide dog that was a failed guide dog. Brilliant, this dog failed. The woman who's publicist in Melbourne, her dog, uh, is apparently a failed guide dog. You, um, yeah, you're no help. Where's your owner? Yeah, don't dogs... How do dogs... I can't work out how dogs know where they're going, because... Because if you have restricted eyesight and you have a guide dog, you've got to tell the dog where you want it to go. What? But if you can't see it, I can't work out how you quite work that out, how the dog knows where the end point is. Oh, no, I, I've got... No, but obviously... People who are blind with guide dogs, they must have already worked out. So, yes, now, change of attire, costume, clothing. I don't normally do this. That's just a conceit between... I had an interval there, but... And, uh... I didn't want things to be too campy, but so in trying to work out the look, we came up with various different looks, this kind of military action transvestite kind of look. And we ended up with two looks. So I thought, well, what the hell, I'll change the look at half time. Because I don't want it to get to become about the clothes. So I have to. Um, so we had to fiddle around with everything. So we designed it and then we rechanged it and readjusted in Los Angeles, in New York, in Boston, in Philadelphia, constantly changing things. Because my boobs actually <laughs> made that jacket. They changed the shape of it because it pushes your boobs out, which and you never think about when you're not got boobs. So uh, this is kind of a this military top with a... Uh, Slit skirt and those boots are kind of fantastic. You can't see them enormously closely, but um, 
they're just at the, they just fit me. I have quite small feet. They just but they've got amazing lace work all the way up the side. I prefer the pants to the other one. Um uh I'm terrible at reading books. I still I like them. A bit heavy. I love DVDs, they're so much better. Soon we'll probably won't have that, we'll just download everything. They didn't take it in, it just went. I said, What was it about? Uh, uh, Savutio. I don't know. What? <laughs> I take it all in, you see. But then anyway, I bought a speed reading book because I wanted to speed it up. Have I read the speed reading book? No. Um, but logically, that's one book that, as you read, should, there should come a point where you go, Ah, ah, ah. Then the down, down, put your hand on the thing. Was it going to go? And if I read that one, I could read all the other books. No, that is weird. People read books, and they, and then they say they forget it quickly. But they, fast readers, they read it, and then they forget it. But I read it. I do. It does stay with me. But I didn't read many books when I was a kid. I, bizarrely, I read Lord of the Rings, the Narnia books, some Asimov. Um, Alice in Wonderland, just complete fantasy stuff. Escaper stuff. Oh, weird. But I'll watch films and everything. But then I'll watch films in Lord of the Rings. Now, this is true, the, the Africa thing. And I said two DVDs. I've had my own DNA check. I think DNA is very interesting. It's going to prove some things right and wrong, you know. The fact that we all apparently are from Africa. Yeah, this is my pet idea. Well, what are my stupid ideas? Oh, you know. Anyway, um, that's another war. Hitler hated people so much he lost the Second World War. There you go. Interestingly, and never as polite as smokers. Have you noticed that? Smokers always go. Do you mind if I smoke? Oh, you do. Okay, I'll go outside and have a cigarette. Racist people never go. Do you mind if I'm racist? Oh, you do. I'll go outside. Fucking blue people, eh? Come in here, steal our hamsters. <laughs> Bye. Yes, now where were we? The children, they're lovely, aren't they? <laughs> now, I have worked out that personally, I'm a hunter-gatherer type. This is my body type. You know there's very thin people, thin people who eat pigs and they say, oh, I have I've put a thing on. I've never done hunting. You know, and that's, that's tricky in its own way because they can't get any bigger. I do hunting and for, and you know, if I was out in the wild. If I look at a piece of lettuce, I go... But, you know, chickens come in shops, so... I'm a runny person. I'm, not I'm a chicken and fish person. Fishing, I've done fishing. Eaten one fish that I've caught. I have caught one fish and eaten it. I apologise to the fish. Less loneliness of the two long distance runners. Good at that. So I think I'm a hunter gatherer. I think my dinar goes back to the hunter gatherers. And you know they love. Why do they love? I just think I'm a hunter. I don't know if I'm a gatherer. Not very tidy. I think I was a kind of you know, hunter gatherers. Got them, got it it is a weird back. name because you understand the hunter culture, and then the gatherer together. culture. <laughs> hunter and a gatherer. Well, who would be a hunter and not a gatherer? And they just hunt things and just leave them there. They're very good because they're very fastidious. There's a badger left. You left a badger here. Because I think I'd be a hunter and I'd come back. Where's the badgers? Ah, oh, I fucking left them. <laughs> left them on, on, the, on the, the cops. <laughs> on the knotty hill bit. On the crag. And I think that sort of relationship, it was like a golfing relationship. He said, oh, look, look, a gazelle. What do you think? So, I think a three spear. So, yeah, a three spear. <laughs> Wasabi! Gazelles are really fast. Like, oh, yeah, I missed it. Get another three spear. And then uh, small ones like uh, marmots. Go, oh, just a wood. Just a wood, thank you. <laughs> well, never got a pause there before. <laughs> That's what Eastbourne likes. <laughs> Do you like that one? Right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't fucking humour me. You must love that thing on the pier you get where you hit the rat thing. That hit the fucking rat. What a fucking brilliant guy. Fuck, hit the fucking rat. Because if you haven't seen it, rats, uh, there's about eight rats and they're just below the surface and they come up and you have to hit them. And it's just, hit a rat. Rat, but it's munch, it's like fucking rats. Bubonic plague. 
What a wonderful plague, bubonic plague. It's such a big word, bubonic plague. It's not the Black Death. Oh, Black Death. It's the bubonic plague. The Havasablonic plague. The Sintentrandlmondlnik plague. You know, Mr. Bubon, who uh, invented it, who first went, a tissue, a tissue. What's up, Mr. Bubon? I think I've got the plague. <laughs> the bubonic plague? Could be. Yeah. What's the symptoms? My hair goes all curvy. Well, that's just a soccer problem, isn't it? That's a football thing. That's perm. That's too tight on the rollers. It's Islington hairdressers. Harvey Lane, Islington. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. It's... <laughs> right. Um, what's this? Um, <laughs> now, I didn't need that mind. Because Marcel Marceau, you know, I've worked out. There's a whole gun problem in America, because I've travelled through in America, and they have this whole gun problem, and the people say how to deal with it. I think you should ban handguns, and there's been an outcry, but then allow artillery. Because <laughs> it'll slow them down, you go, come on. <laughs> Just field artillery from World War II. The fuzz. <laughs> Bug. It's one of the most tiring mimes I've ever done, that one. <laughs> I'd said that to Marcel Marceau. I said, it's really tiring, the artillery mime. <laughs> Marcel? <laughs> <It's re> <laughs> Marcel, it's a really obvious gag, but they laughed. <laughs> Marcel, have you hung yourself? <laughs> Come on, lad, say something. Qu'est-ce qu'il a sur la plage? L'éléphant de ma tante. Habite près de la mer. Et j'habite tout près de Monsieur Kiska Destang. That was really going well, Marcel. That was blur it, blur the end bit. It really tailed off there. Ad living's not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'll talk to you. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Lock. <laughs> oh, oh, what a 2003 joke. <laughs> Ten years ago, we wouldn't know key lock. We wouldn't know key lock would be so important. <laughs> Otherwise, you phone people up and you just <laughs> you get a message for someone that's. Steve, Steve, Steve. Steve, you got your phone on? <laughs> Steve, switch your fucking phone off, mate. <laughs> if you haven't got a mobile phone, then you won't know what I'm talking about, but... <laughs> Thank God for key lock. Oh, God, before key lock. Endless phone calls that went on like that for hours. Anyway, uh, so... Uh, uh, um... Help me. <laughs> what? Oh, hunter gatherers, yes. So, hunter and gatherers. And they hunted mammoth as well, didn't they? You'd, I'm not sure. They're huge fucking elephants. It's weird that they had I woolly mean, mammoths and then they all died out and then you got unwoolly mammoths. Because elephants, aren't they just mammoths but not woolly? Smooth mammoths. I should do about that. It's just, it's an, it should be called woolly elephant, shouldn't it? Because they're just elephants with wool, aren't they? But they have an elephant bloody gun. Uh, what was it? They didn't have a, a, you know, mammoth spear. Give me the mammoth spear. <laughs> just run onto this, would you, Mr. Mammoth? <laughs> Too bloody big to hunt. But they invented things. This is 50,000 years ago. And remember, our civilization, back to the Egyptians and the dog people there, that were five and a half thousand years. Fifty thousand years ago. Long bloody time. And they invented fire. Someone invented fire. People say, well, fire was from a light. This was the only idea I had at the beginning of the show, the beginning of the tour, the day that fire was invented. 
I don't think I ever quite got it into the shape that I wanted to get it into. No, I think it's fairly good now, but it took me ages. It took me about two and a half months to get this right. Every other idea in the show has come from being on stage and just ad-libbing away. But um, I used to write ideas down and, and then I'd have them on a list and I'd do touring around. I'd say, right, let's do some of these ideas that I thought of before the tour. And, and I'd look at the list and go, I can't, none of them grab me anymore. So I actually, at the beginning of the tour, which I now do workshop tours or work in progress tour, at the beginning of this one I did, where I played places like Froom in England and Ilfracum and Bilth Wells in Wales and Potheli, 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 and uh, Alapul in the Highlands of Scotland, Norwich, Colchester, just where I went out and just talk any old crap just to get in the right you know to see where ad ideas are coming from and I sort of have to do that I need to do that for a good period of time to develop up material because I just can't seemingly write it would you like a dressing what have you got we've got thousand island we've got 970 island we got 400 island we've got three mile island Oh, balsamic vinaigrette, balsamic vinaigrette, balsamic vinaigrette. I would like some balsamic vinaigrette, balsamic vinaigrette. It was just some, some suggestive thing. And it's yummy. <laughs> and what's it made out of? Balsa, balsa wood, balsa wood. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's model aeroplanes, isn't it? You make a model aeroplane and you go, fuck it, so let's put it in the salad, put it in the salad, put it in the salad. <laughs> and then you eat the salad and the solvent, you go, ah, the salad. The glue, it's the glue, you know. Yeah, I love the salad, oh, it's so creamy. That solvent abuse, your fucking salad, you fuck off your salad. Should be funny. <sighs> yes. So, um, there must have been someone who said, I'm not having salad anymore, I'm gonna bloody change this. I'm gonna... Look, Jeff, what are you doing? Come and have your salad. It's getting warm. No, no Sheila, I'm gonna invent something right here. Now. What, after you've masturbated? This... <laughs> Years ago, when I watched a show at Congress Theatre in Eastbourne, I never thought I'd be on stage saying the word masturbation. Oh, interestingly, I was going to do God by Woody Allen when I was at the school, Eastbourne College, in, uh, what was it, 1980, where the head teacher said, no, you can't, because it has the word orgasm in it. Actually, I don't think it was him. No, he just said I shouldn't do it, because I should concentrate on my exams. But it had the word orgasm in it, and that was banned. I don't, I did this yesterday, I spin the tree and it makes And they're linked, you see, they are linked. Yellowstone. Masturbation, orgasm, uh, I believe. Warm. If not, then you're doing it wrong. Here. Jeff, you're not going to be famous. Come and have your side. I, I'm going to be, Jeff Fire, you are not going to be famous. <laughs> I am, Sheila, and you know what I'm going to call it? I'm going to call it Jeff. <laughs> For years, they would say, throw another log on the Jeff. Let's put a Barbie on the Jeff. Oh, early porn. <laughs> ah, it's an old pornography joke. You've had it all. Eastbourne, you're yeah, crazy. I like the, the idea took me ages to get there. Throw another log on your brother. I kind of like that one from um, the beginning of it. But yes, that, so that's in a fairly good shape. But that, the one idea I had at the beginning of the show, and that took me about three months to get that into shape, where some other ideas, you'll be on stage and boom, it'll come out and become a whole idea, sometimes become five minutes of material just straight off the top of your head. I like the lazy Susan idea. Well, noodles, fuck off, I'm going to. What? What, jam? Fuck off. No. All right, you can have some rice. All right. What? Hang on. Just give us a second, for fuck's sake. Oh, you're bloody lazy Susan. I am. That's lazy and rude Susan, that seems to be. Just pointing that out. The joke's purposes. So, a lady. So you invent a wheel. The guy invented the wheel was off the crackers. I have invented a major new transport thing. Oh, really? Yes. How does it work? You strap your body around the wheel, and then your friend pushes you down the hill. So the wheel followed on from the fire thing, and um, I never quite got this into the right shape. Have you met Axel Rod? I had to get to the axle, and then it became a list well, of things. And the guy the strapping ball. himself around a wheel. Before I had... Somebody looking at a gin and tonic. 
and looking at the lemon in there thinking if I make one of these I'll put it on the draggy thing and I have the draggy thing which is like based upon the Native American they used to have that sort of triangle of wood behind a horse which they would drag people along on which seemed not very smooth but, that's what, but they didn't have wheels so the Native actually that's interesting I mean the Native Americans were there 1600s when the pilgrims turn up they did not have wheels so no one in their culture had invented a wheel interesting and there were two types now this is interesting because it is true I mean like this became the material that you have to get to invent a carriage you need to invent an axle invent a wheel work out to put two wheels on and a chair and make a hole for the chair and all that stuff Edison used to do this, Thomas Edison, he, to do the light bulb, he had to invent the light bulb, the, how to generate the electricity and how to do a wiring system, the whole thing. But he was also a scumbag and stole people's ideas. He's a very enterprising and a scumbag. Not too good yesterday, we went hunting and... Half I always thought this should be funny, just the idea that 200,000 years of Neanderthals, that, um, where, where does the, they just couldn't have developed much. Well, then again, I suppose you've, you've got the coelacanth, who hasn't developed an awful much, or those big or, um, worms, they're not incredibly, how long have they been developing? It's a bit weird. I think Darwin's got it right, but there's something else to be added into it. Which I can't quite work out. How come we're so bloody clever? No, thought of that. This was quite a performance piece, um, in the sense that certain pieces of, I needed to be inside the Neanderthal and whatever, and I fell. I, uh, I, I couldn't quite hold on to how the Neanderthal and the Homo sapien, the exchange. It was more funny before. I've, I've, I'd lost the magic out of it. And using the method that I use, which is to try and keep it always molten, the, this molten material thing, the idea of you never write it down, you never lock it down, so that every time you come to the piece, it, you say it different. It means it can stay up in the air, but then it also means you can... Well, actually, on this piece is an example of where I started locking down the words, and it just lost the joy. I don't think it's as funny as it should be. So apologies for that. And what do you think of this book? What do you think of this book in a critical way? It's all right. There you have it. It's all right. The news programs to be. And now uh, we have what breaking news. Uh, uh, what's all this here? What's this line? What's this white thing going along here? What's this crawler thing? What's the more news? Uh, now, now the weird thing is this: I watched two Steve. DVDs, two Steve. DVDs, what? not what's VDs, what? two what? DVDs what? on um, what? 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 the whole yeah. everyone coming out of Africa now, and the original the Eve, who was African, and uh, there was one woman who I is the to. mother of. Everyone, everyone has come like from that. And it's the seven daughters of Eve, I believe, who are most people in Europe are from those seven women. Um, but they have slightly different, these two DVDs are slightly different dates in there, which is a bit uh, alarming in a way. You think, ah, here's the DVD with a definitive answer, and then you listen to another one, it's slightly different, and you think, oh, and you realise it's still, still discussion to happen. And, you know, probably some people come and say, no, we weren't all African, but... Anyway, that's all for me. Love, Bill. But, um... And those whole fucking changing room programs... I am very happy to believe that DNA research that they've done. Then poo along here, up there. Then poo, then poo. Then a bit of weed, then poo. 
then poo, then we, then we, and then a poo bar here. <laughs> and here they come. Uh, <laughs> and what do you think? This is shit. So that didn't happen. <laughs> but then, 45,000 years ago, fact seekers, what happened was something like that. There was an ice age, of course, and everything got jolly jolly cold in the North and South Poles, a lot more ice, and then the sea level goes down to make all that ice, goes down by the height of a 40-story block of flats. Residential office, doesn't really matter. <laughs> and so in, around the equator, it gets not only hot, it gets super duper hot. So the people in Africa were saying, look, I may be African, but I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> And some of them went up via Egypt into Central Asia, and some of them went down through Ethiopia, past Yemen, and down into Australia. Yemen, another my, my hometown. Yeah, so I am a child of the Middle East. I am a child of the... And so I look to the East and West, like we do with medicine. We have East and Western. The Western's very pill-driven. The Eastern is uh, more curious. Like, um, like... Acupuncture. I've had acupuncture. I don't know if you've had it, but I've seen it on telly and they push those little needles in. And obviously in the body there's levels of ow, 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 and in between ow there's sort of yum or sponge cake or something. And they seem to push it in the sponge cake bit so it doesn't hurt. Oh, I saw it on telly. It's all in the Matrix. And so I had it because I, I, I have a rotator cuff problem here. My shoulder's all kind of fucked up. Because in the rotator cuff you've got four muscles. You've got supraspinatus, you got the uh, the This is really weird. Twangy. This shoulder stick. Apparently, yeah. this is true. Of my left shoulder is all getting knackered at the moment. Well, no, for the last five, eight years. Rotator cuff. But both left and right shoulders went. Apparently, people's shoulders just go. Which sounds. I wonder if it's something to do with the fact we used to be quadrupeds and now we're bipeds. A small needle being pushed into my arm. <laughs> it's not ow, it's kind of ow. Uh, but 30 of them equals ow. The MRI is very weird. You get like a circular thing. I've seen them before and people going, they slide in on this tray into a big circular futuristic machine, but it's so tight. It's really claustrophobic in there. And I don't normally get claustrophobia in some really tight places. So I gave it to the dog and there was no way. But uh, dentistry, interestingly, we've only seen My dentist is a very good dentist. No, uh, and a nice man. I mean, He's actually a comedian, itself, Simon Godley. Still in the torture field. It's Comic the actor as well. When you when you're a kid. So this is not based on him. This is based on <laughs> dentist when I was a kid who took all my teeth out. Well, that's just based on the idea of drilling itself. <laughs> and this is a classic example of people saying, ah, your material's not nothing interesting because I mean doing stuff on dentistry is, is, is God, there's nothing new there but hopefully in the end of it we've got somewhere vaguely interesting with it where did this start this is like almost like I must have talked about this before dentistry and hairdressers well that's okay it, it is weird. Right Whatever you get x-rayed. I, I cracked my coccyx doing okay, now, and then when they put the, the film Avenger. The, the last shot, it's I fell off. And the coccyx is, is the, the rump of your, ta it's your tailbone. Wow. When we used to have big old tails, big old bushy tails. And if you crack it, you can't do anything. You can't put it in the splint. It just mends itself slowly. It really hurts. So if you ever fall on your bum and it carries on hurting for about an hour and you think, what the hell's going on? That's your coccyx gone. And I had it x-rayed and the guy said, in New York, he said, ah, oh, well, you've either cracked it or you haven't cracked I can't tell because it's blurry. So that's pointless. I ended up having a drill with two hands. It was the best way to, to show it. It's like it was some sort of hand drill. Like it's, it's in carpentry, it's just that a single hand drill. I don't know why I've got two hands. Well, I've got the one hand on the, the microphone. This is a piece of material I couldn't have done with a head microphone. The Bock of the Berlin Wall, that would be nice. Third tooth decay is round the edges. 
The decay that I planted last time has taken hold. Looks like we're gonna have to drill. Whee ha! Gonna have to drill. Whee! Fire it up, nurse. I'm gonna drill his face off. Whee! How do I You drill up. You drill up. Then they become like bad carpenters. It is. This is just a rant on that, which I've only just started doing at this point. But it is true, you you tend to rinse out your mouth with all this sort of slightly ready water. And then it runs out and you have to beg for more. about the bloody red stuff. Give me just turn it on. It's like they dole that stuff out. Then he goes, right, I've drilled your face off. You got stumps for teeth. I'm gonna screw in some new ones. They're the new titanium teeth. They screw them in and they're sponsored by the makers of Scrabble. So they've got letters and numbers on them. So there we go, top row. I'm gonna tell Scrabble, I can never get my head around. But there are new screwing teeth. Points, It'd be quite row, nice if you could put the book now. <laughs> that wouldn't be quite nice. 71 points. If you smile, it should happen. Just, it's all drilling. There's just no invention, everything new. We've got a better drill, faster drill, and it's hot. Can't they just make them quiet? It's a da, 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 da. I kept it's trying to think of getting finger. something different on the top set of those teeth. I'm trying to make a sentence out of the Scrabble thing. Even one dentist said, I've got this cream. Tell me, uh, rub it on your tooth. Tell me when it hurts. And I go, uh, ah, oh, that hurt. Ah, oh, that hurt. Ah, oh, that hurt. Uh, what is it? This is just a hurty cream. It just hurts. <laughs> Who wants to be a dentist? Who wants to be a dentist? Anyway, I'm going to finish up tonight so we can all go home. I'm going to finish up tonight. Uh, but I just want to mention something on horses. Because um, when I was a kid, I did horse riding. Now, as probably some of you did. But I have found out recently that we didn't. This was my experience, and that's on the what South Downs. Because I did wearing. horse riding. Yeah, true. Here, the I think when I was uh, 12. And horse do. Yes, There's I'm a picture of me with a yellow with turtleneck sweater and jodhpurs and a black hat, and, and I look like a pillock. It's not cool. It's not a cool look. Water, it's very ridey. Look, and it's done, it doesn't even look good. I just look like a kid with a big hat. But it never got up to this... The Western ideal that I had in my head. It's just, that's why I couldn't get this fucking horse going. Come on, you fucking go. I mean, that wasn't a Western to me, with my black bobble hat on. Steve McQueen was never in a black bobble hat with a yellow bloody... Roll like jumper. I wasn't cool, I looked like a dickhead. I wanted danger, the wind in my hair, not the wind in my black bobble hat. Crappiest hat in the world. Going on, I hated it. I mean, fox hunting is, there's a big fox hunting thing. There's these arguments in Britain about fox hunting. And they go around, they obviously hunt the foxes because the foxes, they attack chickens. And posh people have an alliance with chickens, just like in the First World War. If chickens get invaded by foxes, then the posh people come in, because they go to the same clubs. Yes, I know you. Yes, I went there. It was very, very sunny. You lost your head. How did you get on? Oh, really? That's very funny. Don't you have to do a punchline, see? So, anyway, they, they chug. They find the fox. Mr. Fox, you must be culled. How would you wish to die? By lethal injection would be the safest and most painless way. How would you like to be ripped apart by dogs? I'd really rather not. 
and they get the dead fox and they get small children and they go, go on, blah, 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 There you go, little Johnny, rub your face in the dead bloody butter there. Thank you, Father. I will never be fucked up by this. <laughs> I never, never fuck me in any way. I hope to grow up to be a member of the aristocracy and not be odd at all. But anyway, horses, they're trained. They're trained by people. People with whips. Walk on, walk on. Kumba, kumba, ooh la la, ooh la la, hinda, hunda. Sheepdogs as well. Who kumba. Or horse whisperers. You've heard of horse whisperers. They're very touchy feely. Very much from the oh, there boy, there boy. There, there. I've got you. Why don't you get a call? And tell you, you, you are alive. You can't on the position. Horse is going. What? I don't quite understand. <laughs> I said, why don't you come? I'll tell you what to do because it's the foot together. Oh, that I've chosen to be doctor. No, I, I tell you quite a bit. I, I can't. Could you, could you speak up? Horse whispers are onto a loser. It's horse shouters who are the better trainers. Walk up, walk forwards, walk you, walk forward. Stop, stop, then stop, or I shoot you with a gun. But anyway, with all this horse training, I got a Western. I, I got cast in a Western last year. Cast in a bloody Western. Fantastic. Knowing I've done this film called Blueberry, like which by the time you okay, watch right, this, like it a, could be uh, out. A French Western. Oh, just like the, the Italians did spaghetti westerns. This is a French baguette Western, as I'm calling it, which I think. I keep repeating this because I. Well, it, it's a bit of a sad joke, but I think it does explain. But it's exactly like the spaghetti westerns, in the sense that it's um, the, instead of the Italians making an English-speaking gritty western, it's the French making an English-speaking gritty western. I haven't seen the film The Horse Whispers. And I'm going, God, I could be tr trotting out of this like this. I'm a big badass thing, and then go. Clink, 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 stupid hassle, clink, clink, clink. I thought, God, I better make this horse, make sure, give him a bit of a kick. Got spurs on, so oh, I could give him a bit of a easy, easy. Because the spurs go clank, clank, pretty good. So I'm there on the horse, and they say, What do you do? Okay, they say, What do you do? Do you say your lines? And then you go, heart, the horses go off, gallop out of frame, and then we'll shout cut when we've got enough. Okay, thanks. Okay, ready? Michael Madsen over there, be quiet. The horses I don't think anyone believes me at this point. Horses, horses <laughs> point it's it's not usually like a promise one that you get a Western. But I did horse. get cast in a I should He's use not. the word cast in a cast in a Western. Western blueberry. Blueberry. Great, I got I got good on horse. Here we go. I am I am pretty good on horse now. So much so that when I was in New Zealand on this tour in a place called Queenstown, which is fantastic on the South Island where a lot of Lord of the Rings was shot, you should go there. It's just great fun. It's very... A lot of young people there. You can go rafting and canoeing and speedboating and, and like paragliding and everything. And, and frisbee golf, which is fantastic fun. When you throw a, like a frisbee at a tree, it's, and you have 18 holes or 18 trees you have to hit. But... um. Yeah, I did horse riding there. And, uh, and the horse was apparently supposed to be one of these bad horses, just like when I was a kid, which would eat the grass and he'll drink the water if you let him. And I had this technique, as soon as I get in the horse, I start telling the horse where to go, tell them to go here, and then if they're following a load of other horses, they'll go off when they feel like going. And I, I sort of stop the horse and don't let them. And then I, choose, I tell him when to go. And you've got to be commanding with horses, otherwise I feel they're powerful children. And do what the hell they want. So this was this was true. This was on north of Chiricahua in the north of Mexico. I'm on the horses. Michael Madsen on my left, and uh, a Mexican actor called Antonio, I think, was on, on my right, and he was actually a painter as well as that. And we just shot off into the distance, and we didn't know what we were doing. I actually had a I had a mule attached to my horse. So my first day of in the Western, I have to gallop off with a mule attached. 
And I said, I refuse to have the mule attached because I, I'm just learning how to ride a horse, let alone ride a horse with a mule attached. Around the pommel, you've got this pommel, this pokey bit sticking up at the front where you wrap your, the rope of your mule around. So I said, I'm going to let go of the mule. And then, and then we said, we worked out, let go of the mule. And the mule will catch up with me later in the film. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I let go, and this horse went, this horse went so fast, the Mexican horse, that the, the rope was wrapped around it, went out at such speed, it unraveled from this mule that I could have got my fingers lost every time. It was bloody dangerous, but great fun. I did have great difficulty stopping that horse. There you go. So now, um, yeah, so Blueberry could be out by now, I'm not sure. By the time you, if you happen to listen to this. But now we've got an encore bit, and it's kind of weird, you always do an encore, you have to do an encore. It's quite an odd thing, you have to build in an encore, you have to just go off and come back on. I mean, well, I could just carry on and not do that and then stop, and then people. I don't know, you just force an encore on them whether they want it or not. It's, it's a little odd. But there you go. So then I come back on and. Uh... Oh, yeah. Ditch the uh, jacket. This is my. It's a very. It's like stripping very slowly during the show. I was going to give her a quid. Going to put a quid coin in her G string. Anyway, um, how far can we go with this one? I've never been to a strip club, but I've heard that people put clothes on or something, and then they t I'm not sure. Um, all right, finish up. Finish up, I'm going to do my latest bad impression. Yes, sir. Now, my impressions are incredibly bad, and they've been known... This seems to have got me a long way. I really do love doing good impressions. Uh, people who can do good impressions. And Peter Sellers started his impressionist, apparently. Uh, not apparently, actually. Um, he was a fantastic impressionist. But I'm not. But I'm willing. So Michael Gaston played Freddy in um, Day and Death of Joe on Broadway. Very nice guy. And he started do. He could do this impression of Christopher Walken. He lives upstate in New York State, up in the New Paltz area. And I think uh, he has a great American life. I like his life. But anyway, he, he did this impression during rehearsal, so... I'm not sure if I'm sounding at all like Christopher Walken here. So, sometimes I'm hearing Christopher Walken in my head and sometimes I'm not. Summer uh, by the sun of York, uh, oh, all the clouds are loud. <laughs> going a bit off Christopher Walken. <laughs> tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, you know, it, it's a petty pace, it goes on. Uh, this watch, this watch, it's your father's watch, it's your grandfather's watch, it's, it's, it's your birthright. No, it just sounds like me attempting a vague Christopher Walken. This is the, the Pulp Fiction famous. Watch scene that Christopher Walken did. If you haven't seen that, you've got to watch that, and then it'll make sense. It's just a bizarre thing. And uh, there's a ten-year-old kid who's Bruce Willis when he was playing the character of Bruce Willis when he was a kid. Bruce Willis's character when he was a kid. Anyway, thank you very much. Well, there we go. Show from Eastbourne. Um, yeah. I hope my great granddaddy would have liked that. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know if it's his cup of tea. When he first came down to Eastbourne. Uh, 
So thank you very much. Uh, this has been Eddie Azar talking vague thoughts off the top of my head or spurious or just trying to give a bit of information. Uh, okay, bye. <laughs>